that one from Drake Future and Young Thug, Way Too Sexy. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from The Voice of America. I'm Dan Friedel. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear stories from Ashley Thompson and Dan Novak. Ashley tells us why toy makers are starting to think more seriously about adults as customers. Dan tells us about an area in what is now the western U.S. state of Nevada. After looking at fossil evidence, scientists think it may have been a special area where giant reptiles who lived at the time of dinosaurs went to have babies. After that, Faith Perlow and I have the Higher Education Report. We look at recent news of a growing number of Indian students in the U.S. and why they come to study at American universities. Keep listening after the report for extended comments from one of the students about his experience in the U.S. and how he found a school while living on the other side of the world. Then, Ana Mateo brings us words and their stories. She looks at some special holiday expressions you can use at this time of year. And now, here is Ashley Thompson. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Elizabeth Holenick has turned to toys from her childhood to deal with worry and stress. She started bringing Lego toys to work to build things out of the colorful blocks with her co-workers. She also started playing with Silly Putty, a toy made of special rubbery material that changes colors. Playing with the Silly Putty, she said, brought her comfort. I always need something to be tinkering with, and that's probably the safest bet for me to stick with a toy versus keep trying to figure out how to fix cars or something like that, said Holonik, who is 37 years old and lives in New Jersey. Before the COVID-19 pandemic, many adults turned to toys to remember feelings from their childhood. The stresses from the worldwide health crisis only grew that trend, said Jim Silver. He is editor-in-chief of TTPM, a toy review website. Many toy makers see adults' interest in toys as a long-lasting thing, even after the pandemic fully ends. This so-called kid-adult market is a big part of the toy industry. The market is the second-fastest-growing group, after customers aged 12 to 17. Some toy companies are creating new products, services, and websites designed for the older group. For example, Mattel's American Girl Cafe recently added alcoholic drinks to their menu after seeing adults show up without children. American Girl makes popular costly dolls. Last year, the company Build a Bear launched a website called Bear Cave for customers 18 and over. Products include a stuffed rabbit holding a bottle of wine. Even the fast food restaurant McDonald's is marketing to toy-loving adults. It released its adult Happy Meals in October. McDonald's president and CEO Chris Kempzinski said the company sold half of its supply of collectible toys 
in the first four days of the special deal. The Lego Group has been increasing its products for adults since 2020. It now has 100 toys designed for older customers. Among the most popular toys for adults are Star Wars and Harry Potter-linked Lego sets. That information comes from NPD Group Incorporated, a market research company. Genevieve Cruz is senior director at Lego. She said, The pandemic certainly served as a catalyst for this trend, as adults found themselves stuck at home with nothing else to do, with a lot of time on their hand. The American state of Nevada that contains fossils of giant marine reptiles. Scientists previously thought it was a place where they came to die, but they now think it may have been where the reptiles came to give birth. The area is famous for its fossils from giant ichthyosaurs. Those are reptiles that controlled the ancient seas and could grow up to the size of a school bus. The name ichthyosaur means fish lizard. The creatures were underwater predators with large flippers and big mouths full of teeth. The ichthyosaur bones in Nevada were found in the 1950s. Since then, many scientists who study fossils, or paleontologists, have investigated how all these creatures could have died together. Now, researchers have proposed a different idea in a study recently published in the publication Current Biology. Several lines of evidence all kind of point towards one argument here, that this was a place where giant ichthyosaurs came to give birth, said co-writer Nicholas Pienson. He is a fossil marine mammals expert at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History. The area is in Nevada's Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park. The area used to be a sea but it now sits in a dry area near an old mining town, said lead writer Randy Ermis, a paleontologist at the University of Utah. The creature's skeletons are very large. Their vertebrae are about 25 centimeters. Bones from their flippers are as thick as large rocks. To get a look at the skeletons, Researchers used 3D scanning to create a detailed digital model, Hermes said. They identified fossils from at least 37 ichthyosaurs from the area, dating back about 230 million years. The bones were preserved in different rock layers. That suggests the creatures could have died hundreds of thousands of years apart rather than all at once, Pineson said. A major discovery came when the researchers found some tiny bones among the massive adult fossils. The researchers learned that they belonged to embryos and newborns, Pineson said. The researchers concluded that the creatures traveled to the area in groups for protection as they gave birth, like today's marine animals. The fossils are believed to be from the mothers and their young ones that died there over the years. Finding a place to give birth separated from a place where you might feed is really common in the modern world, among whales, among sharks, Pineson said. Other information helped rule out some previous explanations. Testing the chemicals in the dirt did not turn up any signs of volcanic activities or major changes to the local environment. And research showed that the reptiles were preserved on the ocean floor far from the shore, meaning they probably did not die in a mass beaching event, Hermes said. 
The new study offers a likely explanation for an area that has confused paleontologists for many years, said Dean Lomax. He is an ichthyosaur specialist at England's University of Manchester who was not involved with the research. All may not be known, but the study really helps to unlock a little bit more about this fascinating site, Lomax said. I'm Dan Novak. The number of international students coming to the United States has dropped in recent years. Experts noted three reasons for the decrease. Concerns about U.S. policies toward foreigners, efforts from Canada, Australia, and Britain to gain international students, and the COVID-19 pandemic. But the latest Open Doors report showed that international students are coming back to the U.S. The yearly study looks at the number of international students in the U.S. It also looks at how many American students are going away for school. China remains the country that sends the most students to the U.S., but India is closing the gap, according to the 2022 report. The number of students from India increased by 19%, while those from China dropped by 9% in the most recent school year. VOA Learning English recently spoke with three Indian students to learn more about their reasons for coming to the U.S. Shivani Sidre is from Pune, a community near the western Indian city of Mumbai. Sidre is in her first year studying for an advanced degree at Syracuse University in New York. She came to the U.S. after completing college in India and getting some work experience. Sudre said she and many Indian students have delayed their studies in the U.S. because of the COVID-19 pandemic, and one of the reasons for the recent rise is that they are making up for lost time. Studying in the U.S., Sudre said, gives her more choices and Indian companies value an advanced degree from the U.S. more than the same degree from a school in India. It has the technology, the developing companies, and a huge scope, she said. If you are doing a master's, it is easier to grow. Is studying user experience an important part of website design? at the University of Michigan. He attended Michigan as an undergraduate and will complete a master's degree next year. Sundaram spent most of his time in New Delhi before coming to Michigan five years ago. During his time in Michigan, Sundaram thinks there has been a change in the thinking of students from India. In the past, he said, Indian students came to the U.S. looking for a better life. Their parents fell in love with the idea that the U.S. is the best. But lately, students come to the U.S looking for a culture change, or looking for the school that is the best for them. On the whole, everyone was just about the grades, and about being the best, and about getting into the best university. I think now there's just a little more acceptance that maybe, maybe, 
just getting into the best university and getting into the best job is not necessarily what it seems to be. Malika Gour is a third-year student at Syracuse University. She said Indian students are coming to the U.S., even though it is difficult for them to stay and work after they finish their education. The student experience, she said, is different in the U.S. The U.S. explores and promotes a more well-rounded education, which is enticing for us. All three students said they have been able to study in the U.S. with the help of scholarships and other tuition reductions. Students can pay less for school. If they work as teaching assistants or resident advisors, Gore receives financial support from the Next Genius Scholarship Program. As a graduate assistant, Sundaram gets a small amount of money in addition to free tuition. Sadre also has a scholarship. Since the cost of education is very high in the U.S., Sundaram said some Indian students choose less costly education in Hong Kong, Singapore, and Germany. And the strong U.S. dollar against the Indian rupee does not help. Five years ago, Sundaram said. It was about sixty-three rupees to buy one dollar. Today, one dollar costs about eighty rupees. Alan Coe is the chief executive of Cardinal Education, a U.S.-based company that helps students prepare their college applications. Co's company works with many international students each year. Even before the start of the COVID nineteen pandemic, he saw signs that more Indian students would be coming to the U.S. But the Open Doors report only showed it this year. Indians are very attracted to the American story, Co said. There are so many Indian Americans who have. Skyrocketed to the top echelons of business and technology here. Co advised students to look for universities that are one level below the very top. Those schools, Co said, will likely have scholarship money for strong international students. Co said he expects to get more business from India shortly. He is planning to visit to speak with students and families soon. And we're not traveling for work yet, but India is going to be my first stop when we do start, and we'll probably be going to at least four cities. I'm Dan Friedel, and I'm Faith Perlo. I'm Dan Friedel, and you're listening to the Learning English broadcast. You just heard from Kartik Sundaram, a graduate student at the University of Michigan, in our report on higher education. He is studying user experience, or UX, which means he works to learn about how people interact with websites. It is part of STEM. Which includes science, technology, engineering, and math studies. I asked Kartik if he thought coming to the U.S. was only worth it for Indian students in STEM studies. As much as I hate to say it, I'm pretty sure STEM degrees still outclass every other type of degree、um, in terms of earnings after graduating. 
that's not to say I agree with the attitude of Indian parents that say, well, we're going to force you to become a, you know, a STEM graduate because that's the best, you know, chance of earning money. That's what happened to me, kind of. And I rejected CS right away. I just happened to discover UX and it happened to be a STEM degree. But there's no math in it, really. A lot of it is design and interviewing people. So, yeah, I mean, I can't I can't deny the facts. It is I think STEM degrees are better investments, but maybe not for someone's happiness. Kartik mentions CS, which means computer science. That is what he started to study before changing to user experience. I also asked about how he researched the schools in the U.S. from all the way on the other side of the world in India. Here is what he had to say. Just researching schools was tricky because obviously I didn't fly over to, you know, Michigan or, you know, UC San Diego to check out their campuses. So, for instance, I was thinking about Vanderbilt and I knew a couple of things. I knew Vanderbilt was crazy expensive. And I had heard that Vanderbilt had a big party atmosphere and had lots of concerts. That was it. And then, so that was just my broad understanding of each university like that. And then I'd try and read reviews on Reddit and things like that. And, but again, I had no idea what I was looking for, really. You know, everyone around me was just like, search for the best program and search for the best university. It doesn't mean anything. You know, now looking back now, there are so many like minute nuances that I can appreciate that somehow I ended up in the right place, I think, that I would not have known if I was just Googling it. And still Googling it took so long. It was a big, big, big process. That's Kartik Sundaram, a graduate student from India studying user experience at the University of Michigan. I'm Dan Friedel, and you're listening to the Learning English Broadcast. And now, words and their stories from VOA Learning English. December is a special month when many people celebrate holidays around the world. There is the winter solstice celebration called Dongzhi in China and Toji in Japan. Jewish people celebrate eight days of Hanukkah. And African American culture has seven days of Kwanzaa that ends on New Year's Day. In many places around the world, today is a holiday Christmas. So we will talk about holiday expressions that you can use in American English. Let's start with the holiday spirit. If you are in the holiday spirit, you feel good about holidays and are looking forward to them. Some people get into the holiday spirit weeks, even months, before the actual holiday. However, for some people, the holiday season can be a sad time. Or some people just do not like holidays. If you are really not into holidays, for whatever reason, you can say, I'm not really in the holiday spirit. But let's say you love holidays and are in the holiday spirit. If you get invited to some special holiday events, you can say you'll be there with bells on. For example, if I invite you to a holiday party or dinner, you can say, thanks, I'll be there with bells on. This doesn't mean that you will actually wear bells. It means you are very excited to attend the event. However, if you want to wear bells, well, you can do that too. 
the expression i'll be there with bells on does not have to be used just for a holiday party for example let's say you are invited to a birthday party you can also say you'll be there with bells on now for better or worse gift giving is a big part of many holidays so let's talk about some expressions that come from gift giving sometimes the best things in life are very small and simple for those things you can say good things come in small packages this expression means you should not judge a gift or anything based on its size many smaller items may be of high quality or value for christmas in the united states many people put gifts under the christmas tree but some people also have stockings for small less costly gifts and sweets they stuff these stockings with them so the gifts are called stocking stuffers many workplaces celebrate the holidays with gift giving but who has the money to buy gifts for all their coworkers not many that is why we use secret santa for gift giving with a large group everyone in the group picks the name of one other person that is the person you buy a gift for and you become their secret santa it is also common for large families or large friend groups to have a secret santa it saves everyone money and it is a lot of fun many children who celebrate christmas are warned that santa is watching them throughout the year if they are good they go on the nice list if they are bad they go on the naughty list naughty means your behavior is a little bad and parents tell children that those on the naughty list will not get any gifts or they will get something they don't want like a lump of coal in their stockings So if you are on Santa's naughty list, do not expect to get anything nice under the tree. You will just get a lump of coal in your stocking. And that's all the time we have for this words and their stories. Until next year, I'm Ana Mateo. Thank you, Anna, and thanks to all my VOA colleagues, Ashley Thompson, Dan Novak, and Faith Perlo. Thank you for listening. From all of us at VOA Learning English, we wish you a happy holiday season and hope you can use some of those new expressions soon. Please join us again tomorrow to keep learning English with stories from around the world. For more, visit our website at learningenglish.voanews.com. I'm Dan Friedel.